Today we continue in John 15 with verse 8, where Jesus says, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Now, if you think about that phrase, isn't that interesting? The order in which Jesus says this. He doesn't say, my father is glorified by this, that you become my disciples and bear much fruit. He says that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Why do you think Jesus may have said that in that order? Is it possible that Jesus is intimating or hinting that it's in bearing spiritual fruit that we become more and more fully disciples or followers or students or imitators of Jesus. Uh, and God is glorified as you bear much fruit. And what that says to me is that real disciples bear fruit that witnesses to God's glory every single day. How you live your life, how you speak to and treat other people, uh, the service you render, the generosity you share, the compassion that you render, um, the mercy that you show, these are all ways that we glorify God and bear fruit as Jesus' disciples. And as we said in the beginning of this week, in the beginning of this image that we've continued to focus on of God being the vine grower, Jesus being the vine, you and I being the branches, that we're constantly reminded we are called to bear fruit. And so it's something that even at the end of each day, it can be a helpful practice to write a page or two in a journal and to talk about where did you see God's presence in your life this day? How might you have contributed to God's glory? How did you help somebody else? How did you bear spiritual fruit? Uh, there's an old saying uh, that what gets measured is what gets done. In other words, whatever is being evaluated, that's what we tend to focus on. And so one of the things as disciples of Jesus, I think we need to be much more attentive to the fact that every day God is that vine grower looking in your life and mine to see, is there any spiritual fruit growing here? Is there any fruit developing? Is there any fruit that's ripe? Um, because if you think about your own growing a garden, uh, if you had a plant that never bore fruit, how long would you continue to water it and fertilize it and allow it to continue to take up the soil? Eventually, what do you do with a fruitless plant? We should be sobered by the fact that Jesus says God does the same.